Chance Cronk. I fight out of Bournemouth, uh, Phoenix MMA. Yeah, no, I'm not. Um, training's gone well. Everything's, uh, all the prep work's done. It's all now about putting it into action. It's good, he's unbeaten. He's had three, I think three unbeaten. I've had two unbeaten, so it's a fair contest. Just try and stay on my feet, I think, as much as possible. I know he likes to go to ground a lot, more from what I've seen, so it's just a case of uh, just going out and doing what I do. Yeah, I'm pretty confident about it all. Oh, he's confident. He's only got two arms and one, two arms, two legs, like everyone else. My name's Ashley Kilbington. I'm fighting out of Mad Hatters Asylum in Chichester. No, I'm not worried about my fight. Uh, I've been training hard for a long time. Um, I don't know too much about my opponent, but I mean, I'm not worried anyway. I know I've put the work in. I've been working my wrestling, uh, my jiu-jitsu as always, but yeah, focusing more on my wrestling and my striking for this camp. Game plan is to pressure my fighter, take him to the floor, and then finish the fight on the ground. And making his way down the fighter's entrance, on the walkout now, Chaz Kronk from Phoenix MMA. Dean, a guy who is an absolute wild man. Seen him box before, certainly a crowd favorite. He's a talented boxer, fought on, fought on a hyper-aggressive style, a real wild man, and normally a crowd favorite, Chris, because he's got power in both hands. Love his striking, but he's also got a sort of grinding style that tends to bring out the very best in his opponent. So a dream matchup really here in the co-main event tonight. Relentless with the takedowns if he needs it, but I would expect in this matchup he will stand and trade. And here he comes, Ashley, in the co-main event tonight, Ashley Kilvington from the Mad Hatters. Certainly another one to watch out for here, trying to keep the undefeated streak. Dean, a pressure fighter. He always works well when he is dictating the pace, Chris. Nice in and out footwork as well, and great timing. He will catch a kick that's thrown his way and turn it into a takedown at lightning speed. So the Mad Hatter capable of pulling the rabbit out of the hat if it needs to be. Also got to talk about this guy's wide range of submission attacks. He's got a pedigree there on the canvas that could also be a factor in this one if Chaz Kronk looks to take it down. So he's got a good clinch Dean, power double leg, and more importantly, will swarm in on his opponent. Doesn't give his opponent any chance to breathe, Chris. He's a master at head fighting in the clinch, and it serves to frustrate his opponent, enabling his, him to get the takedown. And here we go, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to the Apocalypse Fight Series. It is now time for the co-main event. Chris Hookstra on the call, alongside Dean Midhat here, out of the blue corner. And Phoenix MMA, Chaz Kronk in the white trunks. Ashley Kilvington in the Black Valley Tudo shorts in the red corner for the Mad Hatters. Here we go. Here we see some of Ashley's in and out footwork. Nice leg kick, but he's an overhand right from Kronk. Got to be very careful with the kicking game against a power striker with the hands like Kronk. Expect Kronk to try to time that kick and punish with the fist. Kilvington now on the back foot. Ops for the takedown, gets the double underhooks, Chris. He's going to look to sweep that leg that left leg outwards to gain the takedown. And Kronk with that headlock, trying to play a little bit of Uchimata there, but the danger is, of course, with that hold, is giving her back. And Kilvington dives on there. He's got one hook out at the moment, Chris. He needs to get his other hook in to the left side of Kronk. They have gained more back control there. Kilvington being very methodical here. I love the double control there on the left arm of Kronk that disallows Kronk from being able to turn in and negate the back take. Kilvington working up. Kilvington now jumps the back, and now he's got the hook in. Kronk with a backward slam that disrupts Kilvington. Straight out of a pro wrestling fight, the power slam from Chaz Kronk, but Kilvington and Kronk now up in the upright. Chaz, just such a wild, wild man, will try anything to get out of anything, and it proved dividends there. Catches the kick, now this is what we want to see from Kronk the pressure and the top dominant control. Let's see if he can land some ground and pound in. Like a Tasmanian devil there, turning out of the back control. It was absolutely ballistic the way Kronk now has retained top position. And you sort of look at the skill sets of Kilvington versus Kronk, and you would suspect that Kilvington is more well-rounded. But right now, the brute power of Kronk, uh-oh, luffing the arm in. Looking for the ground and pound was Kronk, but he left his arm out. Now, Kilvington trying to hyperextend from the elbow, but 
Kronk very calm, trying to sneak his elbow past that midway fluctuant point on the hips of Kilmington. And of course, Dean, the lever there being the arm, the fulcrum being the hips. Kronk clears and gets away from all the dangerous torque there on his limb. Man, that was really nasty, Dean. The way that Kilmington slapped that one on was textbook. Kronk very hard to finish. He's known throughout the MMA circuit, so Kilmington is going to have to control the position before the submission, Chris. You can see now here, he's keeping his base down nice and low. Doesn't want to come up on his knees too much because it would get the pressure off Kronk. But now he goes uses that to go to the full mount, Chris. He's looking to rain down punches. And this is the pressure that Kilvington needed. When it's tough to make a man like Kronk, well, you've got to get to the most dominant place you can and then open up the floodgates. Kronk now utilizing the foot on the hips, but he's leaving his arm out there. You can see he's left his left arms up in the air. And that was an incredible round there between both men. Kilvington thought it was over for a second, but that is now going to be the end of the first, Dean. A lot of interesting lessons there from both camps in the second now will be evaluated. Both fighters now feeling out processes done. They felt what it's like to grapple, to initiate inside a fight. Now they start to think about implementing their own game plans. Kilvin needs to be more technical with his advances. Position before submission. Get those hooks in before you try and choke. Kronk needs to beat Kilvington to the punch. Perhaps get that big shot over the top. Look for Kronk to maybe use the uppercut if he comes in. Look for Kilvington to try to mix things up and set up those kicks with boxing combinations because we know Kronk will try to punish those lazy kicks. So, both fighters throwing heavy leather, tasting each other's power, and more importantly, tussling on the mat. We are ready, folks. Buckle up. It's round two. Round two of a scheduled three here tonight in the co-main at Apocalypse Fight Series. Kilvington versus Kronk. Kilvington in the red, Kronk in the blue. See Kronk now with that lower stance on the outside. He looks like he's cocking that right hand, but Kilvington comes in with a double leg, gets the aerial slam. Nice pick up there. I love the way Kilvington lifted him up and then put him down on the mat. You could see Kronk trying to line up something, but what he didn't realize, Dean, was behind him. The lack of space to retreat. Kilvington obviously very wise to that, timing his entry beautifully. Kilvington now trying to work out of this half guard. Whoa, but Kronk gets the sweep but gives up his back. Kilvington so fast with the transitions. We spoke about this, Chris. Now he's got both hooks in. And he's going there with that figure four, but Kronk slides his chin out. Man, is there anybody tougher than Chaz Kronk? Anybody more slippery? Kilvington now on top. He needs to think about firing punches down to open up submissions. Can't just sit here and hold because Kronk can think about the next way out, Chris. And Kronk right on cue, trying to scramble hard. Kilvington now thinking about an arm lock, but unable to slap that one in. And Kronk gets away with the limp arm escape again, playing with disaster, but Kronk's gamble paid off. That's the danger there of going for the, the arm off from that position. Could end up on the bottom, but Kilvington again showing his jiu-jitsu skills, driving that knee through, sits in half guard. To see if he can start raining down some punches with Chaz pinned up against the cage like this. Excellent blockage there from Kilvington using that left knee against the left hip of Kronk, disallowing him from turning in or shrimping to retain guard. And then Kilvington slides into mount. And that's when, it's the moment that Kilvington advances that Kronk tries to time his escape. Possible head and arm choke here from Kilvington. The pressure is on. Can the Mad Hatter turn the crank? He's got that nice and tight. He needs to start thinking about, oh, and he got it, Chris. There's the submission. Ashley Kilvington gets it done in the second. The crowd literally jumping up and down right behind the commentary position. And Kronk, so tough, so durable, so resilient. But Kilvington able to overwhelm him in the end to snatch the W. Set up the head and arm triangle beautifully past to, to, to the correct side and made it nice and tight. He didn't give Kronk any space to breathe or escape. Excellent work from the Mad Hatter fighter. The winner in the co-main out of the Mad Hatters, Ashley Kilvington.
Thank you. 